day everyone. It is May 2nd. Time for another update. Um, I've, since the last video I've been moved again. Uh, it's called Hasik. And uh, and uh, it's pretty cool, it's a mixed tool. It's a lot bigger than the last tool I was in the compound. The last one was maybe 100 feet, 100 feet, 120 feet, 120 feet. This thing's pretty big. We'll stop and do the distance. There's like four or five buildings here. And like I said, it's mixed. So there's guys and girls here. And uh, it's closer to the front lines. I don't know how long I'm here for. When I was at the grain elevator, the, um, one of the, Commanders came to talk to me and said I would go to Sirakani and I said well I want to do some more training first so I said okay well, we'll send you here there's a big city here I must have blowed up because I ain't here this is up that way um so anyway it's not so bad some of the people here are pretty nice the girls are nice um and the guys are nice there's a guy here who's like really good looking. He's 20 years too young. He's Brittany's age. He's Brittany's age. Brittany, I'll see if I can bring him home for you. He's a handsome man, that one. Um, but anyways, they separated the Italian and I, and I'm worried about her. As I was leaving, she said the only moral support she had was me. And uh, when I came here, like I spoke with the commandant at that grain elevator and uh, she made plans and, to come here and stuff like that and then she was supposed to speak with the Italian about going to Kamishlo. The Italian wants to get out of the YPJ. She's quit like 25 days ago but they're not letting her leave. They're keeping her in here, moving her around, giving her bullshit. She's getting very depressed and I'm worried about her. And uh, the commander was supposed to speak to her there but didn't said she was going to come back but didn't so a couple I was there two nights came here the commander was here and I spoke to her and I said I asked her how long was I, am I here for and she's like kind of being vague and typical Kurdish command I think it's mainly the women the men don't seem to be like this it's the women that might be Jay that play games and then I asked about going to Sierra Connie and she's like tomorrow there go tomorrow of course typical tomorrow never comes right so I think they're not just fucking around. I think they're just outright liars. Um, but I'm not worried about me so much as I'm worried about the Italian. Um, I told the commander when I was here, I said, she needs to go to Kamishlo. She needs to leave. She's getting very drunk. She's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. She just kind of blew it off. So I need to find a way to, to make contact, to find out if she gets out. She says if she's going to get out, she's going to send me an email. So as soon as I get an email or internet, I'll be on the know if she's free or not but trying to get internet access around here is like it's fucking nearly impossible <clears throat> so anyways it's getting so we don't trust anyone anymore the western women here are getting screwed over bad I think there's four of us here that I know of one of them's disappeared altogether don't know what happened to her. We heard it, a rumor, it was that Rosenberg, Jill Rosenberg, that she had joined the Assyrians. It was a rumor. Who knows? Um, there's a German girl who came here to do medical stuff. I was supposed to go meet up with her after the academy, but that fucking Haval Denise uh, ended up dragging me to her freaking Tabul, which, you know, I was in the end was okay. I liked a lot of the girls there, but her, Haval Denise, useless absolutely useless person i have no use for useless people the only thing i like about leaving that was that she's gone i don't have to deal with her bullshit anymore um so anyways that's i don't know how that's gonna play out let's see i'm getting to the point though where most days are pretty good but some days it's just like you know i'm tired of the freaking i'm having kidney pains today so i'm probably in a bitchy mood because of that but i'm tired of them Sanitation here is a shit. You have an open sewer wherever you go. They say, oh, they go on about, oh, it's unsanitary to sit on the same toilet as everyone else. In the meantime, they have an open sewer in their house. Because it's essentially what it is. There's no way to flush the thing. It's just shit sitting in a hole. And you can see it. 
you can see who was there and you know oh, okay I know what you had for lunch and there's flies everywhere you know flies are attracted to shit it's fucking the flies are so bad in the houses it's just like I have to get out of here it's just constant and they're menace flies they're not just little they're zip 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 ugh so annoying so annoying I want to like these people I do like these people but the Middle East has some pretty fucked up shit going on get a real fucking toilet stop with the lies and uh what's the other thing something else get there right? but after a while if it was only one thing it would be okay but after a while all these things over and over again it's just like oh my god it's not one thing it's something else i don't mind the heat though i don't mind the heat at all i kind of like it the other guys are like garama oh garama i'm like oh yeah garama <laughs> yeah me likey 7 30 in the morning is like 30 degrees already it's strange how these people can be so homophobic yet half the shit they do in the west would be full-on gay guys holding hands walking around girls kissing and snuggling in bed you know and then you, they go through my tablet and they see a picture of like you know some like friends of mine who are gay and like hey it's just like dude you're halfway there whatever a lot of hypocrisy so, enough pitching. Dash, it's just over there. Over there, over there. These villages here are Haval friendly. But just beyond that is Dash. The first night, I've been here two nights now. The first night here, we were shooting back and forth. Um, it's funny, after a while, you don't even hear the gunshots. We're sitting out here on the table, hello. Hey, well, there's a few of us sitting there. We're talking back here in the bunker up on the roof up there. Um, right bunk up in there. Bixie is sitting there firing away over at Dash down over here someplace. And, and we're just, you know, talking away. It's just like, you know, like talking about the weather and stuff. See, it's weird how casual you get with war and fighting. Like me. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> they're out of. Kalish range, my gun. Sometimes they might be in Canis range, which is the sniper. Definitely, I think most times they're in Bixie range. And Dushka range they're in. Well, I don't actually see a Dushka here. There must be a Dushka around someplace. There's quite a few bunkers here, and I've not been to any of them. Well, I've been to that one, but there's a big one over there. There's two Novichis, uh, two night shifts, and one day shift, I think. Two bunkers for a night, one for a day. Big ones. Big bunkers like that's a big Um that tower right there. Big bunker. That one's twenty-four hours. And the one behind me is only at night time. Oops, maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Um <clears throat> Well actually it's kinda nice here. It's not Sirakani, which is where all the major fighting is going on right now. I'm supposed to go there, and they're not they're not getting me to do anything here. So that tells me that I am going there, just don't know when. Um, because when if um, if I'm here for a while, they'll have me doing guard duties and stuff, which I don't mind. I don't. I like. I'm, I'm practically doing it anyways. I come out here for hours with my binoculars, and then it's funny. I'll come out here, and then all the guys come out and they join me, and we drink the tea, and we end up talking. And I'm learning more Kurdish in the last two days than I have in the previous two months. So I really need to learn to read it. Um, I'm learning some of the letters, but I need to sit down. Nobody here speaks English. So very very little. Like a couple of people know a couple of words. So, but yet I'm still managing to have conversations with people. I'm a good communicator, I guess. Um, but they're looking at me funny, wondering, what the hell is she doing with her camera? A couple of them figured it out. A lot of injuries here today. There was a ton of Yapage and Yapage Yapa gay guys here today this morning. 40, 30, 40 of them all showed up. And they were here for a few hours and a bunch of trucks came and phew, gone. So they went somewhere. There is, I noticed today with the binoculars, a Yapage camp down there. In the club. And I didn't realize that we had some Haval down there. Uh, so close. To the dash. But, but essentially, I don't know if you can see the lights. There's villages here with lights. Like a little bit of a village here, a little bit of a village here. Um, they're not really villages, I guess they're just like a couple blocks where there's some buildings and there's like a field. 
out in the distance, all those lights, if you see any lights in the distance, I don't know if you can see it, that's all dash. And, uh, there's another base over there, and they've been attacking that one pretty regularly the last couple of days. Uh, most of the attacks are suicide attacks, like the attack we had last week at the last Tabul. They're suicide attacks. They're just idiots and trucks who drive up and try and get as close as they can and blow themselves up. But usually we end up shooting them with douchkas or heavy weapons. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I can't imagine what that's like over there in their camp. I'm going to go for a drive. You want to come? No. No, no. That's, enjoy your drive. Talk to you later. Maybe. Uh, I just don't understand. I'm like, yeah, today's a good day to die pointlessly. And especially if they die, yeah, Pege, we kill them. They don't get their virgins, they don't go to heaven. I just saw an interview on TV with a captured Dash. And they were asking about that. And they said that there was one battle where when they were going into battle, they realized it was the, the yeah, Pege, the YPJ girls. And they're like, nope. And they turned around and they left because they don't want to fight the girls. Because they die and they don't go to heaven. I'm not going to heaven anyway. What the hell? I'm losing that shit. Uh, oh well, okay. So I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. The last couple have been over. I think there was another one there I did for 15 minutes. I'm not even going to post that one now. It's just... Uh, yeah, okay. So, here I am. Hastic, I think it's called. There's a big, beautiful house up there. And it's abandoned. And I think there's a big water slide there. I suspect that when they built this reservoir, that was a housing compound for the foreigners who probably were... Uh, contracted to build this area. Okay, but it's really pretty here. Reminds me of Alberta. You know, the mountains are in the distance, kind of like the foothills. Not quite as rolling as Alberta, but anyways, okay. Talk to you later. People starting to come. Goodbye.